Hey everybody, I'm Keychain. Today's video is going to be about new accounts. And I'm going to try and brain dump all the information that I can think of. I'm going to bounce all over the place. It's going to be a little hard to follow, but that's my style. If you're a veteran of the game, this may not be the right video for you. But at the same time, you could watch it and see things I forget and leave it in the comments for newer players to learn. Um, so the main reason I'm doing this is because I've been getting comments and questions about, you know, what do I do first? And it's a little overwhelming. And I've got a friend starting that's, uh, that's asking for information. So I'm going to try and just dump everything I can think of into this video for newer accounts. And I'm doing it from my newly created farm. Now, I call it a farm, but I'm going to be playing it as a second account, basically, until at least Lost Island's done. Um, I've volunteered to help out the alliance that I'm in currently as a kind of a guide for Lost Island. So I've got my main going into Lost Island, and the second alliance on the server claimed me first, which is Zin. And I'll be helping them, you know, kind of guide them, show them how Lost Island works, helping with strategy... Uh, and getting a double dose of fun. Now, I probably won't be strong enough to do a ton, but I'm still going to try. All right, so lots of things to talk about. One of the first things I want to talk about is upgrading. Like, do you want to rush your queen or do you want to focus on resources? Like, how do you do that? My opinion on this is to rush your queen to very first rush your queen to 13 uh, and then you can slow it down a little bit and you know take take your foot off the gas and kind of coast um, but you do want to get to level 18 queen as quickly as you can so that you unlock all four march slots um, because a lot of these events um, are stamina intensive and if you don't have four marches, you're cutting yourself down on how many threats you can kill every day, how many rallies you can participate, um, how many snakes and hedgehogs and things like that you can kill. And some people are going to say, snakes and hedgehogs, I don't get it. I will talk about that in just a minute. So my personal opinion is to rush to Queen 13 and then, you know, you can slow it down a little bit, but you do want to get to Ant Hill level 18. And let me show you how old this account. This is a one-week account. So I got to level 13 yesterday. Uh, and then I'm expecting to be Ant Hill 18 probably by the 14-day mark. So that's about my pace. Um, you will notice right away that I do have five builders. So this is not a 100% free-to-play um, build. I'm going to try and talk and keep in mind that there's a lot of free-to-play players. But I will talk about spending in this video because I know that some of my friends that are coming to the game are spenders. I was a spender. Um, so I want to cover both things. So don't try and get, you know, don't get lost on the, oh, you can only do this because you're a spender. No, spending just helps you get there faster. All right, that's all it is. If you're efficient with your building and your four workers, you can get stuff done just as well. Okay, so I'm going to start some upgrades of my own so that I'm not wasting too much time um, while I'm talking. And I'll just do some aphids for now. But um, the second thing that I want to talk about, um, research and how you kind of keep everything going. So actually, let's take a step back. Strongest War Zone. Let's do Strongest War Zone first. Strongest War Zone is an event that's always running. It runs seven days a week. There's always something going on with Strongest War Zone. So if you click this event today where this little eyeball is, when you click this, it shows you what days are what. So day one, which is Mondays, um, is Ant Hill Development. So that's building. That's building power, building speed ups, all that stuff. Day two is gathering. The cool thing about this game and what a lot of people do is you pre-gather. So you send marches to go out and gather for like 12 hours before the event starts uh, and you send marches that have a gathering time of like 16 hours and after it rolls over you increase your stats your I'll, I'll show you that too there's something called raspberries in this game very important very very important raspberries um, but you pop your raspberry you pull all your marches in and you get all the way to like 
seven shells 10 minutes after the event starts. And I know if you're new, you're like shells and raspberries and what the heck is he talking about? We're getting there. I've just got to start getting these terms out there so you're familiar with them when I do talk about them. Okay. So in the Strongest Warzone event, here's the shells that I was talking about. So you've got your alliance rewards down here that everybody in your alliance gets as your alliance progresses together. So if your alliance gets 685 million points, you will get all three of these shells. It's got resources, raspberries, um, and just some other things like pretty basic stuff, right? Personal rewards, you've got even better stuff. So you've got diamonds and honeydew and speed ups. Um, creature remains, very important in this game. That's for research. Um, more res more um, resources. You get tertiary eggs. You get spores. Spores are very important for your special ants. Um, and then these rewards, they go all the way up to, you know, these are the level six, all the way through six. And then it goes all the way up to nine, and it gets harder and harder as you go along. But you can see the rewards get pretty juicy once you get up here, right? Well, they're not all unlocked, and things don't start off easy. That's another thing that we're going to get into is when you first start, there is a ton of stuff to do. There's so many ways that you can spread yourself thin. Um, now, I'll quickly go backwards, and let's cover um, what each day is. So day three is evolution. So I always keep my evolution going so that that queue is never empty. But I don't use evolution speedups on any day except for evolution day. Um, unless I really, really need to, to get something you know special, uh, it's evolution day for me. And then day four is your special ants day, so hatching special ants, strengthening them, giving them spores, giving them experience, all those things. Um, day five is hatching, so that's your soldiers. Um, getting more points for, you know, speeding through and increasing your army. Day six is a free development day. Most people do gathering because it's easy. And even if you're not going to get all nine shells, um, it's the easiest one to do. That's what I do. Um, because it doesn't line up with a lot of your colony um, events. And I'll show you colony events too because those are super important. And the reason that these all line up and the way to maximize is to do your war zone day and the colony actions at the same time. So since I'm talking about colony actions, you're going to be like, what the heck are colony actions? Colony actions are down here. These are another event that always run. These are running all day, every day. If you click this little calendar up here in the top right, you get an event calendar of which things are coming up. So you can see that on Wednesday, tomorrow, so the Warzone Development Day is, um, actually I'm all mixed up. So the Colony Evolution, and I am right. So Colony Evolution on Wednesdays, um, you're going to double up. See, how, see here how there's Colony Evolution. So Evolution Power Plus One, use of speed ups for Evolution, and you get points for creature remains. So those are the three things you're going to get points for for this one hour, this colony action. And that lines up directly with your war zone for evolution. So you get points for all three of those things. So you wait until this quest is lined up and you do a bunch of research until you max out your colony action and get three stars. And once you've done that, you stop and you wait for the next hour to roll over. And there are a couple of these that you can double up on. So an example would be not these two days. So these two right here. Um, so you can see here this mass development has speed ups for evolving and the use of creature remains. And the one immediately following it has evolution power and each use of, so just evolution power. But if you did want to double up a raspberry, you can wait till the last 10 minutes of this one, pop a raspberry, get the three shells, and then in the first 10 minutes of this one, the, the raspberry is still active because it's good for a half hour, and then you could finish up getting more evolution power here. So there are ways that you can kind of double up um, and try and maximize this, but 
it's harder on evolution day than some of the other days. Okay. Raspberries. I keep talking about raspberries, right? Raspberries, when you hit buff on your queen, there's this event po points bonus. So you've got advanced raspberries that are 100% boost in points for 30 minutes. And you've got regular raspberries that are 50% boost in points for 30 minutes. That's why raspberries are important because basically you're adding you know, either 50% more or doubling your score for everything you do during the 30 minutes that this is active. So plan around your raspberries and use those to maximize your rewards. So you're stacking Warzone construction with a raspberry, colony actions, uh, and trying to get as many shells as you can for bonus rewards, bonus points, etc. And it helps the server. So all of those things are important to kind of combine and try and maximize. Now that was a lot, okay? We'll give you just a second to process, get a drink of water. Now, we never really get off the subject of Warzone um, construction. We're going to go talk about evolution. When you first start the game, my personal opinion, the most important research to get is the first top here, this rapid production. Um to unlock rapid production for all of these buildings. And then the second piece that's, so this one's important, this rapid upgrade, because every time you upgrade a building, it restores it to 75% on rapid production. So you get two attempts to rapid produce. Uh, rapid production gives you a bunch of extra resources. So let me come and show you, do I have any that are ready to go? Uh, I don't have any that are full, but here's an example. Right now I have a 49% chance to succeed with rapid production on this plant, and I get 8,900 plants if I succeed. So I hit start, this one failed, let's try again. So over here, 57% chance. And that one I won, so I got 8,700 plants. And this meter just slowly fills up for the whole day, and then you can try it a couple of times, and then it fills up. But the, the bonus here is I use this down. I can't do any more, right? So now I'm down at 7%. I can't do anything. But when I upgrade this, as soon as I upgrade this building, the meter fills back up. So now I can try again. I succeeded twice. I just got 16,000 more plants. This is especially useful when you're doing low-level resource tiles, starting at, like, level 1. You get a new level 1, and you're like, oh, Rapid production, rapid production, upgrade. It finishes. Rapid production, rapid production, upgrade. It finishes. Rapid production, rapid production, upgrade, etc. You see how this goes. So you can bank in 30, 40, 50, 60,000 resources really quickly. And, you know, if you're in the Ant Hill 7, 8, 9, it makes a huge difference. It makes it so that you can actually keep going. Um, and talking about that and talking about helps, we're going to talk about a special building, which is this one right here, the Alliance Center. The Alliance Center is very important for helps, okay? Looking at the details here, the higher you, I always try and keep this building as close to my queen as I can because every time I upgrade it, I get an additional help from my Alliance members. And every time I upgrade it, I get more seconds off each research. So if you're in an active alliance and people are hitting, you know, the help 10, 15 times with, within, you know, the first couple of minutes, um, an example would be, you know, some of these buildings only take 15 minutes. Well, if you've got 10 active alliance members and they all take a minute off, you just save 10 minutes of speed ups or you don't have to wait. Um, so that helps a huge amount. So try and get in an active alliance at first if you're going to be pushing through a bunch of research, just put in chat, be like, hey guys, please hit the help button. I'm going to be burning through a lot of research right now or trying to, you know, speed through some stuff. And in an active alliance, it's going to help you a huge amount. Now, okay, I've talked about a lot of stuff. Going back into evolution. Um, the next thing that I think is very important is this basic combat tree. Now, the reason that this is so important one, it gives you the ability to increase your ants' mutation. So you can 
mutate them from, say, the lowest level to your current highest. So say you have a bunch of level one troops, you unlock these, and then as you're progressing, you know, all of a sudden you've got tier three. Well, now you can upgrade those tier ones into tier three troops. And then you go a little farther down the tree to mutation level two, and now any of your ants that are level four to level six can be mutated up again. So researching all the way through here makes it so that you can continually upgrade your ants all the way until you get to tier sevens. And that's when you have some more challenging research um, to unlock the ability. But these first ones, very important. The other thing that's super important about this tree, extra spoils, getting extra resources from wild creatures, 40%, big deal. And then these primary attacks. So it makes it so that you give more attack and more defense when you're attacking wild creatures. Um, and I think that's super important for a couple of reasons. One, the higher level creatures you attack, the more resources you get from those kills. Um, but two, it makes it so that you can complete one of the most important quests or one of the cool quests when you're a brand new account. Now we're going to bounce over to that and then I'll come back to the research tree. The event that I'm talking about that's super important for new players is this natural selection event. Now the tasks in the natural selection event, look here, defeating one of each type, level four, one of each type, level five, one of each type, level six, all the way up and it gets higher and higher and higher until you're killing level 10s, level 11s, level 12s. And you've got to kill one of each type all the way up to level 15s. And you're getting points for each one of these kills. So that research is important to help you get through this. In addition, the reason that you want to complete this quest, and we're going to talk about a mistake that I made when I started the game and something that you shouldn't do. When I first started, I thought, oh, the blue ants aren't that important. They're, you know... I don't want blue ants. I don't want purple ants. I don't want any of this stuff. So I took a bunch of eggs and spores and other stuff, right? There are some ants in here that are super important. This is the third one of them, and I'm actually going to buy that right now. Um, so the reason that these ants are important, one, they're hard to get, but let's look at what they do. So muscle man is one that I got right off the bat because it increases my soil production. So I get more from rapid production. And then it makes each individual soil station that I have, which I think I have five of them now, each one of those increases by 600 hours. So that's going to help my resources a ton. And that's a pretty decent ant. The second ant, and these are the three that I missed on my main and I paid for it. Texas turtle. This is the guardian blue ant. And look at this last ability. When you max it out to level 10, once a day, you can get 500 guardians of your highest level cap. So it's 500 free guardians a day just by pressing the button. And this guy right here, bright blue ant, is the shooter equivalent of that. And then this guy right here, strobe ant, is the carrier equivalent of that. So I'm going to unlock these abilities soon. And it's going to make it so that I'm getting an extra 1,500 ants every single day. And long-term health in the game? That's huge. It may not seem like a lot, but if you're getting 1,500 ants a day, it's going to help your power. It's going to help you grow. Um, and it saves you time. So get those three ants um, at least. And then, you know, if you do want, you know, you'll get more copies of Muscle Man. But I bought Muscle Man right off the bat because why not? And then from here, what I'll do with the rest of the points, I'm not going to buy any of these combat ants. So the combat purples. And the combat blues, these top six, I won't touch those. I'll probably get a bunch of spores. Um, and then from there, I'll probably buy, I don't know what I want to buy after that. Probably some of the eggs. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try my best to max this out and get everything I can done to get points and get free rewards from it. Okay, so we've talked a lot about Warzone construction, um, colony ants, natural selection colony actions. Now, here's another event that's always happening. Force of life. So there's force of life, there's force of nature, there's force of desert, like there's four or five different ones. The basic premise behind this is 
there's different quests that you need to do. So you check in and you get resources, speed ups, and, you know, bones. You have to hunt hedgehogs. You have to gather resources. On day two, they'll unlock some things. Um, I don't remember what they all are, but it's like spending diamonds, using building speed ups, using evolution speed ups, um, using hatching speed ups, all of these different things that unlock each day. And they count throughout all the days. So if I use 1,500 minutes worth of evolution speed ups today, it's counted on this event. So on day two, when that quest unlocks, it's already all the way completed. So once you memorize what these are, you know what you have to do each week. And the reason that matters is, let me show you this. Here's the research tree. So as you unlock all of those things and you kill things for these bones every day, you're going to send your ants out to collect bones and you're going to get points for each one. And you're going to unlock things on this left side. So you're going to unlock a bunch of, you know, generic fragments for castle skins. You're going to get creature remains, big chunks of resource, diamonds, um, tertiary egg, like uh, decorations for your castle. So these all have small boosts, like this one's guardian ants attack. Um, so you'll unlock these ornaments and all of these things. And then if you do decide to purchase the premium rewards for $20, you're going to get another castle skin that changes every single time. So you'll get all 100 fragments you need, and then you get a whole bunch more stuff. You get more spores, more creature remains, more tertiary eggs, more everything. Um, so it's, you know, if you do decide to do premium, there's a whole nother set of rewards. So this is always going every week. It just changes to a different one and keeps going. Um, these creatures, you'll see people rallying hedgehogs and killing hedgehogs. Um, they'll say they need hedgehogs or they need snakes or they need um, frogs. Um, what's the last one? Hedgehogs, snakes, frogs. I can't remember the last one, but there's four. And basically you just cycle through those and you're going to get these chests. So the first 20 times that you kill creatures every day, you're going to get a chest. And when you use them, there's a chance for you to get bait. So here I got two baits. So I got these bug baits. Now that's hedgehog's favorite. So if I was going to use one of these, I summon it out on the map. I rally it and everybody can join and we all kill the hedgehog. It's not hard to kill. But then you get extra rewards um, and things that you need. And after you're done with that, it gives you more points towards the event. So you have to kill a lot of hedgehogs. You have to kill 30 hedgehogs over the course of, you know, the day. Okay, now let's see. What else is there? When you first start, there's another event called Planet's Gift. So this event is a new player only event. And you start, it's similar to the Forces events, um, where on day one, you have quests. You get to log in every day, and each day you get some rewards. The higher your queen goes, you get points towards these shells. Um, the higher you build special ants, you get more points. On day two, it's ant hill development. Like, if you get a nest to level 16, to level 19, if you get a non pro rally center to 16 you get points and all these speed ups so you get all of these things um hunting preparation so hatching troops gets you eggs and resources um killing wild creature gets you these you know rocks they're they're used to upgrade one of the buildings and building speed ups so you see the the pattern here so there's all these different things and at the end right now i've got 86 out of 100 of these shells at the end you get these shells and they have a chance to have any of these things in here so this is another huge source of free resources and spores and shells and eggs and things like that is try and get as many of these done as you can. And you'll see that rushing is one of them. Rushing to Queen 16 within the, I think this is a seven day event. If you can rush to Queen, or it's an eight day event. If you can rush to Queen 16 in eight days, you're going to unlock all of the shells and all of the free speed ups that come with it. Um, and then you can also, uh, one of these was for getting a resource building to 16. So doing that gets free speed ups, um, doing evolution center to 16, get all this free stuff. Like it's another cool event to, to look at and, and try and 
maximize everything you can to get free stuff, right? Okay, so now that we're in this tab, the one that I'm in, benefits, that's the tab that I'm in. We're going to talk about money for just a second, and then we'll go back to some other things. Light contract. Light contract is not necessary in this game. It is a nice to have. It is really nice for people like me who are lazy. I love light contract because I'm lazy. And what do I mean by that? Well, one of the things that you only get when you have light contract is called mass rapid. So what mass rapid does is rather than having to go into a building like say my water over here, it's like instead of having to go in here and do rapid production and then I click it again, rapid production, and I click the other one, rapid production, and I have to do this for every building four times on all 20 or 30 buildings that I have that have rapid production. Well, when I hit mass rapid on water, it does as many rapid productions as are possible on every single water node at the same time. So it'll collect like 40 times at once. And then you go to, to the wood loss colony and you hit mass rapid and it collects 40 times on those. And you do it on plants and you do it on aphids and you do it on all these things and you only have to hit the button like six times and then you're done and you, you can wait till the next day because none of your stuff will recharge until the next day. So it's fantastic for lazy like me. Next, um, more money talk. This Warzone supply event has really good deals on certain things. The one that I always buy on my main account is this Creature Remains one. Because Creature Remains are one of those long-term grinds you need like a million or more of Creature Remains over your course of the game. And quest rewards are giving you a couple hundred at a time, so it takes forever. For $10, you get 4,200 of these creature remains. So if you're going to be pushing or at all or spending, this is a great deal. Um, the Big Shot Resource Supply is a lot of resources for $5. You're getting, you know, what, 35 million resources for 5 bucks. Pretty decent deal. Special Ant Growth Supply gives you bonus special ant experience when you're fighting wild creatures. It gives you these tertiary eggs, so you're getting, I think it's like five, so total, you're getting five of the tertiary eggs, 24 of these chests that you have a chance to get spores, um, eggs, and honeydew, some other stuff, right? You get 24 of those, so you end up usually getting another two or three shells, then you get these 10 blue shells, and you're getting the bonus experience. So this is fantastic, because you're basically getting five tertiary eggs, for five dollars which is a really good deal and then the final one that's a good deal is this strongest war zone exclusive supply the reason this one's a good deal is because it gives you a permanent 50 percent bo bonus war zone points so you get to activate that buff um and then on top of it you get creature remains you get advanced raspberries that you can use and then Toxic Mushrooms, which are a long-term grind as well. So that's another good one. Still on money. <clears throat> Special Ant Growth Supply. When you first start, if you have any money available, buy this. If you're planning to play for at least a month, buy this. It's $24. The very first time you buy it, you get a coupon, you get it for $20. What you're going to get out of this? You're getting five tertiary eggs. Um, five more here, so 10, another five here, so that's 15, um, so 15 tertiary eggs, you get a guaranteed giant destructor that this is hard to get, this makes it so that you can unlock aphid, uh, aphid rapid production, without this special ant, you can't use rapid production on your aphids at all, and you're losing out on a ton of honeydew, so you really want to get this ant. Um, just to unlock that one skill. And then at the end of it, on day 30, you get a guaranteed gold special ant. You get to pick. 
Jack Jumper is amazing. Slim Arched is amazing. Bullet Ant, decent. Gold Armor is amazing. Um, driver Ant, total garbage. Stay away from Driver Ant. But the other ones, getting a Jack Jumper, guaranteed, fantastic. Um, and then you're getting all of these spores, and you're getting some other you know junk purple and blue ants. But when you first start, purple and blue ants are great. You know, you use them until you get gold ants, and then you replace them. Um, looking at my current marches, I've got three gold ants, and I just got golden armor from my seven-day check-in event. Um, and then I unlocked giant destructor as well today. So I've got some work to do on these ants, but, you know, eventually I can disassemble these purple ants and get back the spores or like 80% of the spores and experience I put into them, I get that back and I can use it on other special ants. So the special purple ants are going to help me for a little while and then I'll just get rid of them and replace them. All right. Okay. What else? Um, let's go check research again. I'll make some recommendations in here. So one of the next things that I recommend doing um, after you've started rapid productions and you've gone to a certain point, I need to finish this and I didn't realize I skipped this, but this one here is very big. It increases your rapid production maximum by 10%. So instead of being 75% as a max, it increases up to 85%. So that gives you some extra um, chance to get rapid production. And then I need to finish these out. So at, at the very least, I need to do um, fungus and leaves because those are both important. Um, water, not so much. Meat, not so much. But I need to come back and finish this. Hill development is important, but you have to balance it because it's not top priority. Increasing, you know, your soil production by 30% when your total production is only 30,000, not that big of a deal. When your total production starts getting up into the 70, 80, 90,000 range, well then 30% becomes more of a big deal. So I do like to finish this tree, but I don't finish it first because other things are more important. To me, getting your pro march strong enough and start working towards this tertiary leadership the reason you want to get towards this tertiary leadership on your pro march is because of the quest I already showed you. It's this natural selection. If you want to get to these level 15 and 14 um, insects and kill them for this quest, it's so much easier if you have three special ants in a march, even if they're three purple special ants. Having the third tertiary research unlocked is going to make it so that you can actually get these done and get these 12 point huge chunks where you can go in and, you know, use 12 points to unlock some spores or unlock some, you know, this stuff, the key behind you is used to give your ants experience. So unlocking the extra experience, unlocking the eggs, you know, just free stuff. In addition, your pro March is very important for fighting. If you're starting on a brand new server, with brand new people and you guys are fighting all the time and there's chaos, the stronger your pro march is, the more you're going to be able to kill people and take their resources. That's basically the law of the jungle is whoever's pro march is strongest is winning because if their pro march beats your pro march, you're kind of screwed. Like you can take yours off of defense or you can attack them while they're attacking you. But most of the time people don't know what they're doing yet and they get attacked and they get wrecked um so just keep that in mind your pro march is super important in this game um what else what else do we want to talk about oh man okay um let's start talking about buildings that are important the other reason to rush to queen 13 is so that you unlock crystal mine um you want to unlock crystal mine so that you can start getting in there and getting these crystals so that you can start buying things from the store. You want to be able to buy these jeans, um, the upgrade materials. You can get more resources in here if you need them, if you're really tight. I don't usually buy resources, but I've not actually had a farm before, so maybe I'll just buy resources with this farm every day um, and use it as an extra source of, of free resources. 
um, but you want to unlock the mine. Now, other buildings that are important. In this game, you have these buildings called depots. Depots are super important because they increase the cap of resources that you're allowed to hold. If you don't upgrade your depots, you're going to have to spend diamonds when you get capped out. Now, that doesn't happen all the time, but here's an example. Um, I need to be able to hold 1 million sand so I can hold 3 million. Um, but if I wanted to go to Queen 14, I have to be able to hold at a time 1 million sand, 1 million soil, and then 720k um, meat and 740k soil. So I'm, I'm in the millions, but that's because I finished my first tier. It's going to get to the point where sometimes you're going to say, hey, I'm ready to upgrade to queen, to queen 19. And you're going to look and you're going to realize, oh, crap. I can only hold 15 million soil, but I need 22 million soil. And you have the resources, but if you want to go over the cap, you have to spend diamonds. And it's like, oh, if you want to go over the cap, it's going to cost you 25,000 diamonds. And you're going to say, um, no thanks. <laughs> so upgrading your depots. When you upgrade your level one depot all the way to 10, then your level two depot is available. And a level two depot, looking at the sand, for example, at level one, you get 2 million cap. At level two, it's 4 million. Level three is six, etc. 2 million increase every level up to 10. When you get your level two depot to 10, you unlock level three depot which then allows you to go to like 30 million. And then it goes to 35 million and 40 million, all the way up to like 80 something million, or I don't even know what the top cap is for that, but it goes really high, really fast on the level three depots. And you will have to go all the way up to level three depots um, and get those decently high if you wanna max out to Ant Hill level 25. Um, so the second thing I'm working towards is I want my secondary march. Uh, I want my secondary skill to have two ants on my march number one. Um, a reason for that is getting farther in the crystal mines. Now, this is weird because I'll show you. In crystal mines, even though I have two slots unlocked on my pro march, if I want to unlock the second slot of this, I have to unlock the second slot of March number one. If I want to unlock the third spot here, I have to unlock the second slot of March number two. So you'll see here, secondary leadership, March number two, to unlock that third slot. So on your first, second, and third March, you need to get to secondary leadership to be able to use all three ants in the mine. It's not all on one march. So even if I unlocked Pro March here and I had three ants in one march, it won't let you do that in the Spirit Mines. So you want to unlock your secondary march on your first you know, Pro Unit, March 1 and March 2, if you want to go farther in the Spirit Mines. Ooh, okay, talked about a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff. And I'm not even done. There's more. There's so much more. I'm hopefully answering all all of your questions. If not, I'm sorry, I'm doing my best. Ask in the comments. I will happily answer questions that I miss, or I'll re-answer questions. If you just didn't want to watch the whole thing and you're like, dude, it's too much, leave a comment here, and thanks for getting through half the video, and then I'll answer the question, and I'll even tell you what minute marker your question is at so that if it is in the video, you can go watch that part again if you don't like my answer in text. Okay, staying on research, 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 research. Remember how we were talking about war zone construction? Well, very, very important piece of war zone construction is this zone development tab. Inside of zone development, you've got you have to unlock the rewards. When you first start, you can only unlock the first three shells. If you want to unlock shells four through six, you have to get to this intermediate rewards and unlock it. After you've unlocked intermediate rewards, you get this po point bonus. This is huge. When you max this out, 100% bonus points. 
So automatically, you're getting double points on war, war zone construction to everything that you do in a colony action. So if a colony action is worth 1 million points, you're getting 2 million points in war zone. If you used a raspberry, you're getting an extra 50%, so you're getting 2.5 million points in war zone construction. If you have the paid buff, you get an extra 50%. Now you're at 300%. So you're getting 3 million points in Warzone for every 1 million points in a colony action. But wait, there's more. As you go through these trees, you get down here, you unlock advanced rewards, 7 through 9. And not only do you get individual point bonus for the things that you really want, like gathering, if you click here, 100% bonus for maxing it out. 100% bonus for building points, 100% bonus for evolution points, hunting XP, spore points, experience points, hatching, defeating. Oh, look, point bonus number two. Look at this one. This one goes all the way up to 200%. So you've added all those up. You're getting like 500, 600% of everything that you do going towards war zone construction. So then you start getting to five, six, seven shells pretty easily without doing a lot. And you're getting tons of resources and tons of creature remains and tons of speed ups for not doing all that much on your actual, you know, quests. As long as you line things up and you try and maximize, you're going to get huge rewards. It starts to get self-sustaining. But wait, there's more. Double rewards. You unlock this one, every single shell that you get in the war zone construction is doubled from your personal side, all right? So let's look at that. War zone construction event today. So right here, I would get 300 diamonds, 200,000 honeydew, two one-hour speed-ups, and 25-minute speed-ups. Here, I'm going to get 400 diamonds, 80 creature remains. You see where I'm going with this. Double all these resources. Third shell. Two tertiary eggs, 80 spores, 240 creature mates. All of it's doubled. All of these speed ups are doubled. Going on to shells, you know, four through six. All of the re these rewards you see here, they're doubled. If you do go crazy on a day and you max out and you get all nine shells, look at the rewards for nine shells. You're going to get 2,000 diamonds, 1.4 million honeydew, two advanced raspberries, 1,400 creature remains, spores. 16 hours of evolution, millions and millions of resources. So that's a very important research to start, but you also have to balance it with what else you're doing in the game. So it's not like that can be your first rush. The other reason it can't be your first rush is because all of these resources cost creature remains. And they start off low, like this one's 70, but then the level 2 is going to be 100. Level 3 will be 130, level 4 will be 160, etc., until you're spending 500 creature remains on one research. Well, looking at what I've got for the first week, I've got 2,000 creature remains, because this account's free to play. But I'm not going to be able to do all these right away. I'm going to have to space them out as I earn creature remains. And I'm only going to do these researches that cost creature remains on Evolution Day. So every Wednesday, or I should say Tuesday from 5 p.m. my time, so from 00 UTC on two, or you know Tuesday night into Wednesday, that's when it starts. But for me, it's Tuesday at 5 p.m. to Wednesday at 5 p.m. For other people, it's like 2 in the morning. You know, Figure out whatever that is for you. But that's the only day that I spend my creature remains is on Research Evolution Day. All right. Ooh, we're not even done in evolution yet. All right. What else is important in here? There's other things that are super important. Basic military. Why is this one important? For me, long-term goals in the game. Fast hatch is important. 15% additional research speed for that one. An extra 35% research, or not research, evolution hatching speed. So hatching your troops faster. Um, these are very important researches for long-term health. The sooner you get them, the less speed ups you're using to get troops. Your troops are building faster. You get more troops. So this is one to keep in mind. 
if you're going to be fighting, pick the one that you're going to do. If you're if you're choosing shooters, do these three to what you have to. So to unlock this one, you have to get them all to level one. Only do level one. But for like some of these other researches, you have to get these to level five. So I would get you know this level two to five, and then I'm carriers. So I'll take this one to fifteen. You know, etc. Through here. The other thing that's super important for this about fighting is this fatal attack. This increases the amount of troops that you kill when you're invading enemy anthills that they can't avoid. So getting this, it's 15%. It's a big deal because then you're actually getting kills even if they you're attacking them and they've got plenty of room in their hospitals to hold their troops. You're still getting some kills um, because of that skill. If you don't have that skill, you're not going to get many kills. Um, you want kills. You want to hurt them if you're attacking them, right? Okay. What else is important? Well, <laughs> we're not even done in here. If you're carriers, for example, here's one of the things I'm focusing on to make my carriers stronger to make them do the things I want. I'm increasing their troop load so that I can gather more because this is a farm. I'm also incre increasing their march speed because... I want them to be faster when I'm going to hunt threats. I don't want them being slow and it taking three minutes one way to go kill a level 8 insect and coming back. If I max this out as carriers, then all of a sudden I've got 100% increased march speed, saving myself time so that I can get on, burn my stamina, kill a bunch of insects, and then send my troops out to gather and not play this farm anymore. You know, I've done the work, get it done, and send them to gather. And then I let the march gather for 15 hours. And I come back and burn the stamina again. And set them out to march, you know, to gather again. Go to sleep. You know, and do that. But besides that, the research tree for your specific ant, say you are shooters. You want to max this out because this has all the good, best research for shooters. It's going to do things like... Make your shooter ants damage to carrier increased. Stupid shooters beating carriers. Ugh. And you want those researches. Um, down here you get boost. Boost is a big deal. Um, it makes it so that you can enhance your ants. This is something I wish I knew. Um, I knew that was good, but the thing that I missed, I made a special video about this because I totally missed the screen on where you're supposed to do this. But after you unlock boost, I'm like, I unlock boost. Cool, my ants are stronger. And I was like, I don't see any difference. They don't seem to be any stronger. Well, because you actually have to spend time upgrading them. How do you do that? Well, the troop camp over here, this is also where you do your mutating. So right now I'm mutating these ants from tier 3 into tier 5. But if I had unlocked... And I can't even see it right now. Oh, I can. So see right here. See this little ant on the left here? This evolution hasn't been unlocked yet. That's how you increase or enhance your ants. So say I enhance these from tier 4 to enhanced tier 4. Then they gain additional stats. And they have a little like evolution symbol next to them. So you have to make sure to not only unlock that research, but you have to go in and and enhance your ants and use honeydew to do that. So that's another thing is like you're also you're always using this troop camp. Always. You're either upgrading troops through mutation, you're enhancing your ants, um, you're always doing something in here to keep your ants getting stronger. Alright. Is my voice tired? We have been going for a while straight through. Chaos all over the place, no breaks. But what else is important in this game? Well, not only are there depots and the crystal mine and these other things, you've got buildings like this mutation pool. This becomes important later on too. Mutation pool, as you increase it, it allows you to trade in or redeem more times. So see right here, I've got eight redeems. Well, what does that mean? It means when you hatch ants, special ants, and you unlock them, you can trade those in for spores. So in here, I'm going to redeem this green shell, and I change it into five shells, or five spores. 
If I do a blue ant, it's 10. If I do a purple ant, it's 50. I'm not gonna do that because I need those still. But later on, you don't need purple ants anymore. And then you can start trading them in for 50 spores each because you need hundreds of thousands of spores in your lifetime in this game. Especially once you start starring ants up from regular to one star, to two star, to three star, to four star. It costs like 8,000 spores to take an ability from level 10 to level 20. It's crazy. So it's like 5,000 to go from 1 to 10, and then another like 8,000 to go from 10 to 20. So it's a lot of spores for one ability if you want to take it all the way up to max level 20. So keep that in mind. Spores, always spores. You need them, need them, need them. some point in the future, in a couple of months, maybe I don't need spores anymore. See here, I just unlocked a shell during colony action. And this one was for building power. So it looks like some of my, my buildings must have finished while we were doing this video. And they have. I have five empty March queue. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to do these before I go to bed. So I'll upgrade some of these when I go to bed because they're nine-hour builds. So I'll probably do five of these right before I go to bed. But what I want to do right now is I'm going to look for 11 or level 11 or 12 buildings, and I'm going to upgrade some of those. Before I do this, I try rapid production. It failed. I'm going to upgrade it, and then I rapid production, rapid production. So this one, before I upgrade it, I'm going to do rapid production. Now I can't do it again. I'm going to upgrade it, and then I'm going to try again. Rapid, rapid. Here we go. Now, if I was going to do it for sand down here, that one already burned through, but we're going to upgrade, and then we're going to wrap it twice. So there I got 6.3K. Did it again. Successful, 6.3K. Um, what else do I want to upgrade? We'll upgrade this one over here. Bam. And then we wrap it, wrap it. Both of those failed. That's unlucky. We'll go up here. Let's wrap it this. Missed it. Let's upgrade it to 14. Rapid, rapid. So one of those failed, or one failed, one succeeded. So you see the pattern here, trying to get max resources from everything that you can. Ooh, boy, oh boy. What else do I have to talk about? Well, other important buildings. Um, troop tunnel. This is important, not right away, but this is important because... It increases the amount of troops you can have in your rallies. The problem is you have to buy sand with diamonds. So early on, not a priority building. But eventually, you're going to want to unlock this building and get it up to, I think, level 13 so that you can unlock four slots. Um, let me see. Can I even see the details on this? Yeah. So see the amount of rally troops when we get to... Level four, it goes up to two. When we get to level eight, it goes up to three. When we get to 11, it gets to four. So you want to get this building to at least level four. Um, and the reason for that is if you're going to lead a rally on a lizard or a snake or a hedgehog or any of those things, you want to have four slots so that more people can participate and get the rewards and be part of your rallies. Okay. So it's important to get this building up to at least 11 when you're going to start being a leader for rallies and things like that. Other important buildings. We haven't even talked about how you increase your main march. I didn't know this when I started the game. I got my butt kicked so many times because guys are coming at me with marches of like 30,000. And I'm like, what the heck? I've got 3,000 troops in my march. Well, that was because I didn't know about these rally centers. Let's take a look. At level one, your rally center, you can have 1,200 troops. And that's spread out over the march. So that's 300 for slot one, slot two, and slot three. Or 400 for slot one, slot two, and slot three. And then you increase it to 1,500. So it's an extra 100 per. And then you increase it to 1,800, 2,400, and 4,800. And then you can look... At level 13, if I had this at 13, it's 22,800. And that's for the march without any special ants in it. 
So you could see where this starts to be a big deal is like, oh, once you get to level 18, it's 45,000. That's 45,000 extra troops that you have that your opponent doesn't if they're not leveling their rally centers properly. So it's a big deal to start leveling these to get more troops in your marches to be able to do more stuff. It helps you kill threats. It helps you kill people. It helps you gather. So it's important to keep working on your rally centers. They tend to be longer upgrades. So these upgrades should be ones you do when you're doing things like going to work, sleeping. You're going to be busy for a couple of hours. Start your rally center upgrades. Do your small upgrades when you're playing. Do the small things like your resource tiles uh, and fast buildings and things like that while you're actively playing the game. Like It makes no sense to do a, a 10 minute build and then be gone for four hours from the game if you could have done a four hour build and been gone for four hours. You get what I'm saying? Maximize everything you can to make it easier on yourself, to save resources, to save speed ups, to save time, all right? Ooh, okay. More important buildings, special ant habitat. This is an important building. It's an expensive building. It's a very expensive building because you need these glimmery leaves to build it up. You get some in one of these events, the first starter events, but after you're done with these initial ones and you get to like level six or seven, then you have to start buying them. And they're one of the most expensive things in the game. It's like 40,000 diamonds for a thousand of these leaves and some of the upgrades are like 900 leaves so it's a very very expensive building to upgrade but why would you upgrade it because this is where all your benefits come from remember those ants that i was talking about earlier the special ones these you need points to be able to station them to use their special abilities right now i have 17 station points when i upgrade this building so upgrading it to level 5 gives me 20 points total. Level 6, 22 points. Level 7, 25 points. So you can see the higher you get this, the more special ants you get to station for more special abilities. And some of the special abilities are very, very good, like my muscle man and my spiny leaf cutter that give me extra production on aphids and extra production on soil. And then these military affairs ones, like this Texas turtle, the one I was talking about, where you get 500 of these guardian ants every day. Well, you have to be able to station him first so that you can even use him. And then you have to unlock the ability. So there's some things that you have to do before you can maximize those ants. But you have to do it because eventually you'll get to like, you know, 90 station points and you'll have 25 ants working in here and you'll have special abilities all over the place doing all kinds of crazy things, making it so you get tons of resources, tons of troops, tons of bonuses, just tons and tons of free stuff, all right? So don't neglect this building. Even small green ants help, right? This guy right here doesn't do much, but without upgrading him at all, I get 1% on rapid production. So just equipping him, I get an extra 1% on my rapid production for plants. Um, I didn't at the time have room for him, but now I'm going to put him back in there. So it's just like that. Now I've got an extra 1% on my plants. All right. So here, this guy, um, if I unlock this ability, it increases my honeydew production by up to 1,000. Actually, I think that's a better option than this one. So let's remove him. Let's add him. And we'll unlock this ability. Um, the thing that I need to do to unlock this ability, I have to level him up to at least level 6. And then when you unlock ability, you need honeydew and you need spores. So here I've unlocked it. Right away, I've got 5 aphids. So that just increased my honeydew production by 500 per hour. Every time I upgrade this, it increases it by 500 more per hour. So now I'm at 500 total per aphid. So it's making a big difference on my aphid production. Um, okay, what else? Daily tasks. Do your daily tasks. Always figure out what you need to do to get to this 500. It starts off tiny, but as you increase your ant hill level, these resources in here get bigger and bigger. So you get more resources just for doing your daily tasks. And it's things like 
hatching ants, hunting creatures, using speed ups. It's all stuff that you can do. You just have to pay attention to it. And once you get to a certain point, it's like, okay, as long as I've done all of my stuff uh, and joining at least one lizard rally every day, then you get your 500 points of contribution and you're good to go. Ooh. Okay, who's still with me? You guys still with me? I have been droning on about all this new stuff and all these buildings and everything. Oh, man. What else? We're not done yet. You're going to see in chat very often this guy right here with the water. What does that mean? It means this person wants me to water their plant. You click their name. You hit visit. You go to their tree and you hit this water drop. I just gave them a drop of water. If they get five drops of water, they get diamonds, free diamonds every day. So look at the growth. It starts off small, but every time it increases, once you've maxed this out, you've gotten your plant watered for 60 days straight, you get 690 diamonds every single day when people water your plant. So you will see this all day long. People will say, water, please. They'll do this, and people will water them. And water other people, too. Like, you get in there and just, when you don't have anything else to do and you're, you know, bored, get in here and water some people. Help them out. Everybody getting diamonds helps your server progress, helps everybody get stronger. Um, and it, it helps. So make sure you get in chat and get your plant, your pea plant, watered every day. Some people will put the little emote. Some people will say two drops, please, one drop, please, things like that. Um, so you'll start seeing that in chat all the time. Right around reset is when it's the worst. Everybody jumps on and wants water, 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 water me, plants, 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 water me. Okay. Ooh. All right. So my voice is getting tired. Um, I'm going to try and think of a few more tips, things to um, to get off my chest, to try and share. And then we're going to be done. Okay. Ooh, pro tip of the day. All right. You, there's other videos on this, how to hack the system, how to do all these things. Well, this is one we're going to show you. This is a very important one. Look at this. Right now, my resource transport has four days and 17 hours. And it's only half full. So it's keeping all of my production at max for four days, 18 hours, and I've barely had to do anything, right? And that's why I have these cut off. Watch what happens when these buildings are connected. These are your builder buildings. As soon as I connect those, look what happened. It's down to 12 hours, all right? You supply this, and as soon as you've supplied this, close it off or when you need to upgrade these buildings. If I needed to upgrade this worker ant nest, I'll upgrade it and I'll close it off. And then when I need this number to go up, so see how it was only at 53,000 out of 54,000? That's because I had done upgrades in there, but I kept it closed off. Once you open this, your total number of builders will go up at you know 3.6K per hour. But as soon as it's maxed out at 54,000, I'll close it back off. And to do that, I just build, I fill tunnel, and it'll say yes, and I close it off. There's other buildings in this game that you can close off to save yourself on fungus consumption. Some of the buildings that can be permanently closed off, your builder nests, the ones that supply your workers, those don't ever have to be connected. Your sentinel tree, the only time it ever needs to be connected is when you want to upgrade it. Since this is a farm, I won't be upgrading it. So I don't need to ever connect that building. But I did need to build it. Um, there's a bunch of other ones. There's guides on this. Um, tons of buildings that some of them need to be connected sometimes. Some don't ever need to be connected. Healing pools is one of those. You only need one healing pool connected. Uh, and then the rest you don't have to do. Where are my healing pools? I don't remember in this hive where my healing pools are. Oh, there they are. So right now they're still here because I have to upgrade them. But once I get these into like level 15 or so, I'll move them up into the graveyard up here with these. I'll keep one of them down here connected, but the rest of them will go away. Your healing pool will stay maxed at the max cap for all of these as long as one healing pool is connected to your tunnels. Okay, last thing I'm going to say. 
this resource factory, there's a class system. I have separate videos on that. I talk specifically about the class system, about these three classes, the special buildings, the benefits, um, war zone construction. I talk about all of that. Find this video because I don't want to double up too much in here uh, because it's like a 20 minute topic on its own. All right. So go find that video if you have questions about class system, about, um, you know, the special buildings, this building here, about war zone construction. Go look in there. Um, okay, I really think that that's it for this video. Um, okay, maybe one thing that I skipped, these leaf cutters. These are how you get fungus. You have to keep these supplied. Um, you have to keep your fungus production up because fungus production produces other things. So an example is looking at this, see I'm at 100% efficiency because my fungus supply is at 100%. So when my fungus is supplied, my sand is producing at its maximum efficiency. If my fungus goes to zero, my other buildings suffer. They go down, they go to 80%, 70%. You know, I don't know what, the, what they drop to, but you wanna make sure you always have fungus going. So upgrade these leaf cutters and when you want to supply them, you hit supply and it takes one of your builders, but it only takes like 30 seconds for him to go and deliver the resources and then he's done. So keep your fungus supplied, especially um, overnight if you can. Like one of the things I do before I send all of my buildings to you know start long researches is I'll fill my fungus supply so that it continues to build fungus. And then even if they run out, they'll drop to like 50K out of 74K and I'll lose like 20K an hour, but my fungus is, just, is still supplied because I have some. So as long as, you know, the consumption is what is being taken by the other buildings to keep them at max efficiency. So that's, you know, it's another important tiny little thing, but again, everything counts. So I hope I answered all of the questions that you ever had about starting in the ants underground kingdom. Okay, one last thing I just thought of. When you first start, your ant hill is tiny. It's a tiny little area. And every time you level your queen, you get to unlock a new area. So this one, once I get to level 15, it unlocks this chunk of black right here, like half of it. And then I'll have to dig this away by clicking it and I'll tap it and dig it all away so that it's open. And then there'll be another padlock over here somewhere for ant, or for queen 16. And then there'll be another pad over here somewhere for 17. And another one up here for 18. Until eventually your hive is huge and you have room for lots of buildings, lots of decorations, lots of things like that. Okay, I really think that's it. I really, really do. This is a super, super long video. Lots and lots of information. If you took the time to get in here and dig through this and really get all the info that you had, all the questions... Leave me some comments, leave questions. If you watch this and you're a veteran player and you say, hey, dude, you forgot about this and it's a big deal, leave in the comments. I'll pin it so that other people see it so that they know. All right. The goal here was to get new players into the game, get them learning what they need to learn to be contributing members of alliances and kingdoms and to keep this game going. Okay, that was it. Remember to hit the like and the subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.